Hey, you know, I was really hoping you could help me out. Maybe I could get a late checkout? Checkout is at 11 a.m., sir. Yeah, I understand, but it turns out my flight isn't until later this afternoon. Well, in that case, we'd be happy to extend your stay all the way to 11.15 a.m. Wow. Thanks for your generosity. Do you live, eat, and sleep in the hotel industry? Looking to brush up on your game? You've come to the right place. Welcome to No Vacancy, the hospitality industry's number one podcast with your host, Glenn Hausman. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the No Vacancy Podcast. I, of course, am Glenn Hausman, your intrepid host through the wonderful world of hospitality, hotels, food and beverage, and all that great stuff that we all love so much. I want to thank you all for listening. This has been a fantastic month, and I'd love for you to take the time, catch up with some old shows that you haven't had a chance to. Check out our our catalog of shows at novacancy.libsyn.com. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N. I think they spell it that way just to confuse us all and make it more difficult. We're going to have a new website coming soon and lots of exciting things happening in the new year. We've still got a couple of weeks to count down though this year and I'm happy to be home back in my office and man, let me tell you, I am exhausted. The last few weeks have been a wild roller coaster ride all over the country, doing a lot of different things, doing some great consulting, doing some great speaking gigs, but most importantly, recording great interviews for you on this show. I got back with me this week, Mr. Jeff Polly, my executive producer, and the uh, champion behind Endpoint Multimedia. Jeff, how are you, sir? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. How are you, Glenn? I'm doing really great. It is so fun to have you back here. You know, one of the things... uh, uh, that people don't realize about you is you do all of this work for us behind the scenes, making sure the shows sound great and putting together those great little bits at the uh, beginning of the show, editing together, make sure they sound right. And uh, I want everyone to send kudos to uh, Jeff out there because I think they're hysterical. I think they're great. And I'd love to see you get a little more credit for it. No, thanks. But, uh, you know, the only thing I need is for you to put a show together and uh, everybody that listens out there enjoy it. That's all. Yes. That's all the kudos I need. Well, I appreciate that. So let's make Jeff happy. Spread the word of the show. Send it to your friends. Send it to your family. Send it to the guy down the street. But most importantly, if you're checking in and out of hotels, let everybody in the property know that you love the No Vacancy podcast. So, Jeff, I'm psyched to talk to you today. Um, We're going to talk about, I think, the importance of um, hotel reviews and stuff. But before that, I want to tease the folks to stick around for the second segment because we've got the uh, CEO of Apple Leisure Group on, Alex Zozoya, and... Man, that's a $2.5 billion revenue company per year, so you're going to want to hear that particular interview. All right, so Jeff, you know, one of the things that I find fundamentally shocking is that folks still don't understand the critical nature of reviews for their hotels. And I mean the folks that don't get it are the folks that are the ones that should be reading all the reviews and direct feedback for their own properties. Yet, there's still too many disconnected hoteliers that simply don't get it. Yeah, it's uh, it's absolutely amazing that they're ignoring this portion of their marketing business, and and that's exactly what this is. You know, uh, whether it's TripAdvisor, whether it's Yelp, it's a marketing tool, and and if you have positive reviews, it's going to help you generate business, and if you have negative reviews, it's going to hurt that bottom line. In fact, it's not just going to hurt it. It's going to make it seem as if your hotel doesn't exist because the worse your hotel gets, the farther it's going to drop on the lists of hotels for sites like TripAdvisor, for example. And if you get to page two, you might as well not exist. Right, Jeff? Yeah, I have a good friend that owns a hotel and they uh, constantly every day check their reviews and make sure that, you know, Everybody's happy that's staying there. Make sure that if they weren't happy, they try to figure out why they weren't happy and how they how they can better the experience next day. And uh, it's very important. 
Yeah, absolutely critical. And if you don't do it, you're missing out. You absolutely unequivocally must be doing it now. And if you're one of the Road Warrior fans listening to the show, you already know how important these reviews are. And I'm sure you'd be shocked to learn that there are still a considerable amount of general managers, owners and other folks that are not relying on your opinions to set the tone for their property. So I thought it'd be fun today to talk uh, about some properties that really don't seem to be getting it as a, uh, a model for why hotel years need to be hyper focused on the uh the reviews that they're getting jeff stay in any uh really great or really bad hotels lately yeah i've uh you know i stay in hotels approximately 50 percent of the year i would say and uh, uh i've stayed in some really great ones i've stayed in some really stinkers there was a uh, uh a hotel that i recently stayed at in beautiful south new brunswick new jersey <laughs> that uh that that you know the the duct tape holding the the walls together in the bathroom was a magical touch that really really accentuated the the blue collarness of that city. Well, you know what? When you see something like that, at least uh, at least you know that it's in concert with the design of the neighborhood. So maybe it was still a great quality hotel, but they just really wanted to make you feel at home in New Brunswick. It's, is that is that possible? See, it, it seems like that. It seems like they really, you know, added to the touch and the feel of the city and, and, and really made my made my stay feel like I was local and not just an outsider looking in. <laughs> and, and really, that's what you want. You want that sense of authenticity in a property. You want to feel like you're part of the neighborhood. And there's no better way to do that than with duct tape in South Jersey. But that hotel room, I had the misfortune of uh, seeing it and experiencing it as well and uh, really felt to me that um, – they did a great job as long as they set the bar really, really, really low for that property. Yeah, the you know the mismatched chairs at the desk was uh, was a nice touch. Uh, it seems like they just uh, broke a chair, went down to uh, the no- local furniture store, and bought a new one. Right, and also um, I liked how you had to move all of the furniture in order to plug in all of your gear too. Yeah, yeah, that was a that was a good touch as well. Uh, <laughs> the 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 one outlet that could not be used unless you turned off a light switch was uh, was really thoughtful. Well, it's those simple touches that really make the stay complete, don't you think? A- absolutely. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know that was a pretty uh, junky hotel, and I would not choose to stay there again. But I do want to say that there is nothing wrong with being a great two-star hotel or a great three-star hotel or a great four-star hotel, no matter what positioning your hotel is, you should really just try to be the best out of it. So I don't want to say that we're swiping a two, uh, you know, saying something negative here about a two-star hotel, but the fact is for a two-star hotel, that was a pretty lame two-star hotel and the owners there seem to have uh, given up. And I bet that if we looked that up right now on TripAdvisor, we would find people saying exactly the same thing. Yeah, and you know, I stay in a variety of hotels depending on, you know, where I'm at, what I'm doing, who I'm doing it for, that kind of thing. And and I know when I'm staying at a two star, and I know the difference between a good two star and a bad two star, and and so do the the customers. They 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 understand that they're paying a certain amount of money. For to stay the night in a hotel and if you make it comfortable for them no matter at the two-star rate versus the four-star rate they're gonna notice and they're gonna put it online whether they had a good experience or not Mm Hmm. yep absolutely right so uh jeff i decided to um take a look at the uh the website of this particular property um (laughs) When apparently, uh, one review says none of the employees had shoes on, which is a pretty interesting thing. <laughs> that was, yeah, I mean, that's pretty impressive to go in New Brunswick, Jersey, uh, and not have shoes in the wintertime. Yes, uh, it was 35 degrees apparently at the time, so kudos to those people for being uh, super powered with keeping their uh, feet warm without any socks or shoes to speak at. But listen, <laughs> there's also these folks um, said the bedding was disgusting. They should be ashamed of themselves to let people sleep in it. There were uh, marker stains on the white comforter and burn marks on the sheets and comforter as well. And they switched rooms, and their new room had uh, dead bugs within the lights. The clock didn't work. The outlets didn't work. The curtain is torn and not hung properly. 
maybe they got the room that you stayed in there, Jeff. Yeah, that uh, that sounds like mine to the T. They described it pretty well. Or maybe that's just every room. Yep, I do want to be. Uh, I do want to be clear that uh, there are some positive reviews as well. One person said they thoroughly enjoyed their time. The room was clean and the bed was excellent. They must not have been at the same hotel that we were at. Um, <laughs> this other person gave it a five-star review because the hotel is located near many restaurants and there's a big mall in the area as well because that's what I want for my hotel experience, a mall across the street. Yeah, location, location, location. Right. <laughs> All right, so I could go on and on and on, but I hear that uh, you might have some uh, worst hotel stories as well. Yeah, well, well I, I put together a little bit of a list, and uh, obviously we're not, gonna, we're not here to attack hotels or anything like that, but um, you know, I put together a list of, of what the hotel says and then a quick little blurb about a review that was on, online and see how – what your perception of the of the hotel can look like and then what actually gets out of it. And, and I'll throw one out there and we'll see how mm-hmm. this goes. So so uh, this hotel in Tupelo, Mississippi said, hey, we're just minutes from uh, Tombigbee State Park, close to downtown Tupelo, Elvis Presley's birthplace, the Tupelo Automobile Museum, Trey State Park, golfing, shopping, and more. You know, that sounds enticing, but – what are the chances someone is going to book it on that when they when they see a review online that says there was a puddle of blood in front of my door? <laughs> a puddle of blood, Jesus! A puddle of blood. So if it's a puddle, that means there must have I, been some sort of very recent incident that it happened. You know, and and I get it. Some things like happen like that, but you know, it's it's super important to pay attention to that kind of review and and either combat it or, um, you know, answer it, figure right. out what was going on, or just try not to have those bad reviews. In the yeah, I mean place. that's pretty shocking to me, Jeff. That um, the hotel would not even respond on this review site to something like that. Like, um, say somebody, you know, had an accident that was a guest and we didn't have time to clean it up because we were too busy taking them to the hospital or something like that. Right. I mean, you can't just leave that out there in the open for everybody to, um, read and then Mm -hmm. never want to stay at your hotel again. Yeah, exactly. And, and that leads me to my next story, uh, hotel in Miami beach, why you might book this hotel. Mm Mm-hmm. Red and pink neon ramps up the Art Deco field, this three-story South Beach Hotel, across the street from the beach at at Loomis Park. So that sounds great, right? We all want that South Beach experience, Art Deco feel. Mm -hmm. Uh, What are the chances you're going to book it when uh, one of the reviews says, Dirty Rooms with glass in the actual bed under the sheet. Glass I was under the sheet in the bed. I was I was stabbed in the butt. Yes, my left cheek of my butt <laughs> by a piece of glass that was in the bed. I could not stop bleeding. The ambulance and police were called out. Wow. That's uh, uh, unbelievable and really shows the pride that the uh, housekeeping staff has in their job. Right. And, and but again, it's also something that needed to be combated by the hotel online. And if you ignore these reviews, if you just say, oh, well, they'll go away. Um, that's not the case. There's there is there's a TripAdvisor and Yelp and pretty much every review system. There's a way for you to say, OK, this is what the scenario actually was, how it can make it better. And and I'm I'm reaching out to the customer to make sure that everybody knows that's looking at these reviews that I have attempted to make it right. Right. Absolutely. And people don't do that enough. I think the real issue that I see is sometimes these hotels that are two or three star level, you don't have the commitment by the ownership in the property to really, you know, make sure that people have a great stay. They're pretty lazy. I see it all the time. Um, you know, we got a lot of those TV shows right now and um, Discovery Channel, Travel Channel, if you're listening, give me one of those shows where these guys go into the hotels and they're all uh, horrible, 
horrible mess and then they have to go in and fix it. But they're belying the fact that the folks that are running the hotels have some serious either lack of experience or just simply don't care. And whatever lipstick they put on that pig is probably going to wear off pretty quickly once the TV cameras are shut off. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, who, uh, hey, Glenn, wouldn't you love to stay in London, England? You want to uh, go and, and, and have a vacation in lo- lo- lovely London? You know, uh, I, re- I really would. I'm in the mood for uh, a couple of pints over there across the pond. And uh, yeah. I'll tell you what, Jeff, um, with Brexit happening and all of the exchange rates really running in us American boys' favor, it's time to go over to London, save big money, and have a great experience. But I have a, right. feeling, that, uh, I have a feeling that maybe you're going to talk about one experience that's not so great. Yeah, well, you know, if I'm looking at this uh, description online, it's a this hotel in London, England is a superior tourist class hotel located in central London, Ooh. where some of the some of the famous London restaurants, shopping centers are located. Mm-hmm. We so uh, that's all great. That sounds great. Yeah. Uh, one review online says, my partner noticed red lumps on his skin the following day, mm. like hives, really itchy and red. He felt something give and moved over to the window for a better look. There was a small white maggot on his fingertip alive. Oh, oh. that is absolutely disgusting. How could a hotel allow something like that to happen? I don't even know how like maggots get into a hotel. Now I know how they get into my garbage can in the middle of the summer because I can't seem to get my act together to bring it down to the curb, but I certainly don't understand how that could happen in a guest room hotel in the person's bed. That just shows that nobody's cleaning up that place. Yeah, and uh, you know, I would say that as a hotel owner, I would say that that would be my uh probably lowest standard. Oh, I have maggots. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Yeah. Now, you have uh, an interesting story, not maggot related, but bed bug related, where you um, you had an incident in a hotel. Isn't that right? I do. Yeah. Uh, and but this was not, a, you know, this was not a, a, a two star or three star hotel. This was actually a five star hotel that I had this experience in. And it, and it still amazes me. And it's a story, you know, it happened well over five, six, seven years ago. And it, mm-hmm. it's still just, it's still a story that I tell, and when I tell it to friends and colleagues, I name the hotel, and that's that's damaging to them, I think. Absolutely, um, and you know you what? Know, Everybody I, is calling hotels out online. We're being very polite and keeping the names um, you know, below the radar, but that's not what happens in real life. Right, right, and, and uh, you know, I've literally had an instance where my wife – uh, was having a conversation with another colleague about the city that this happened in. And she reached out to me by text and said, what was the name of that hotel that you had the experience in? So, it was, you know, I bet it was top of mind for you. I'm sorry. I bet it was top of mind for you. Able to rattle it right off. Correct. Y- yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and basically what happened was I stayed I stayed at this particular hotel for seven days and I checked in. Uh, I like to think of myself as a clean person, but uh, I checked in clean and I checked out with all these little tiny red bites all over me. And, you know, I did research online and I figured out that they were bed bugs because I had never experienced it before. And I went to the hotel manager and I, I told him about it. I told him how much of a problem this is and, and everything. And he, uh, he 100% entirely dismissed it. He, he was accusatory towards me that I must have brought the bed bugs with my, with me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that there's no way that his hotel has bed bugs and uh, and that he wouldn't do a single thing for me to help me out. And uh, I literally, you know, when I got home, I had to uh, I had to set my luggage out because for fear that I would transfer the bed bugs to my house. Right, of course. And uh, and, and uh, you know, it was about a three week process that you know I set my set my luggage outside and left it outside and cleaned everything thoroughly just to make sure that you know I wouldn't wouldn't bring it into my house it was it was truly a nightmare and this was again a a 
five star property in a major city. Right. Right. Absolutely. Huh. Yeah, you know, it's really a shame and I think hoteliers need to be better focused on responding to their their customers and be honest with the customers. Listen, as a guest, we want you to be successful as a hotelier. We want to help you if there's a, a problem and that's why you went to that hotel to explain what happened. You're not trying to cause a fight with them. It's in, it's unbelievable. Why would No, we- and you know, and I wasn't looking for, you know, uh um I would say unjust or outrageous compensation. I was just looking for the hotel to help me through, you know, what was kind of a hard time. Uh, you know, my wife at the time, at the time she, I told her what happened and she actually made me go shop for new clothes before I could even enter the house because we were so concerned about bringing bed bugs into our own house. And, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I almost felt like an exile and I was just looking for the, the management at the hotel to, to stand by me and, and give me refugee status, I think. Right. But no. And what did they do instead? They made you feel like you were at fault. You were the criminal. And the only thing that's going to happen with something like this is more folks are going to experience that hotel. More folks are going to get those bed bugs and more folks are going to complain and it's going to work against the hotel in the long run. Right. Right, right, and they're going to get bad reviews like the ones that we've been, uh, you know, spouting off. And and I, I tell you what, I look at reviews and I read reviews when I stay at hotels, and it and it, it is a determining factor. I'm not going to say that I look at the worst and negative review online and and immediately say, okay, that person must be telling the absolute truth. Mm-hmm. But I, I weigh all the reviews and say, okay, the bad one, here's the bad ones. Here's the good ones. I'm going to look at kind of the middle ones. And that's probably where it actually ends up. Well, if your middle is really low and kind of poor, then I'm not going to stay at your establishment. Yeah, absolutely right. And what I like to do is I kind of like to uh, read some of the reviews and see what the through line is for all of the reviews. Is there a particular portion of the experience that you're going to have that's getting highly um, negative reviews. Maybe it's the cleanliness. Maybe it's the food. Maybe it's a combination of both. But I think by understanding where that comes from and then relaying it against what needs you have for the hotel, you could probably make a more educated kind of comment or a decision, I mean. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. All right, so – uh, so all this makes sense. This is fun. This is interesting. Hoteliers out there, take these reviews seriously. If you're not doing it already, what are you waiting for? I suspect that the guys listening to this show and the women that are listening to the show probably already take these things seriously um, together. But yeah, what I'd takes, like you, it what, takes thirty it? minutes. A, it takes thirty minutes a day to you know go through those reviews and make sure your customers are happy. Right. Um, and it may not even take that long. It might just take a couple of minutes. How many reviews a day are you realistically getting? Hardly any. And there are mechanisms out there for hoteliers to have all of the social media in one single screen on your computer. So you don't have to go to 10 different places. Now, for uh, you guys listening out there in the the, uh, the audience, do you have any horrible, horrible, horrible hotel stories? I'd love to hear what you have to say. Drop me a note, glenn at rouse.media. That's R-O-U-S-E dot media. Tell us what those stories are. Maybe if uh, they're cool enough, we'll, we'll share them on, on the air. Jeff, any uh, final words for this segment? Uh, I would say, you know, again, social media is a marketing tool that you must in today's day and age, respect and utilize to increase your profitability and, and your, you know, your guest experience. So uh, to me, it's the, it's the most important thing in, in 2016 and going into 2017. Yep, absolutely. All right, so guys, stay around right now for a great interview I have with uh, Alex Ozoya. He is the chief executive officer of Apple Leisure Group. If you know them, then you, you already uh, you love what they do. But if you don't, they're behind such companies such as Apple Vacations, Travel Impressions, JeepCaribbean.com, the hotel brand AM Resorts, Unlimited Vacation Club, and more. This guy is a super, super executive, really interesting story he has, and I know you're going to want to stick around. And be sure before you before you go to the next segment of the show, take a moment. Give us a five-star rating on iTunes. Send an email to a friend with a link to the show telling him to listen. Jeff, I want to thank you for being here today. Yeah, thanks for having me. 
yeah, as always, and uh, keep up the good work making this podcast sound so good. Because I know I'm not trying my best. Yeah, well, you got a lot to work with because I know I'm always uh, messing you up. One of these days, I'm going to learn how to use the technology that I rely upon to talk to everybody out there in the audience. And meanwhile, we will be right back after this message. And thanks for listening. Have a question for your host, Glenn? Tweet him now at Traveling Glenn. No vacancy. The hospitality industry's number one podcast will be right back. Hey everyone, thanks so much for listening to the No Vacancy Podcast with me, Glenn Hausman. You know, you're listening to this right now. That's right, right now. You're listening, but you're not the only one. Many others are too. So my question is, do you want to get noticed? Guess what? I can help you with that. Every single month, my content delivers more than 100,000 impressions. I know, I thought the same thing too. Now it's your time to get you or your product, service, or brand known by leveraging my network. I'll work with you to find creative solutions that are going to get your message to the ears and eyes that you need to attract. Just send me a note at glenn at rouse.media or find me on Twitter at Traveling Glenn. That's glenn at rouse.media, R-O-U-S-E dot M-E-D-I-A. And while we're at it, Glenn has got two ends. Thanks for listening and now back to more great content. One of the things that I really like to do is uh, travel. You know, when I'm not traveling back and forth, it seems, from Orlando or Las Vegas, I like to go to fun places like uh, Mexico and the Caribbean and just sit back on a beach and kind of chill out and relax. But one of the problems I have is I never get the time to go and chill out and relax, but a lot of you guys out there are, are having that opportunity to do that. And one of these days, by goodness, I am going to go do that, but I want to learn more about this interesting business. And I have uh, Alex Zaziah. He's the CEO of Apple Leisure Group. Now, it's a company you may not have heard about, but are very, very influential in the hospitality space for a lot of different reasons. And hello, sir. I'm so glad to be talking with you today. How are you? Fine, Ken. How are you? Good to talk to you as well. It's great to talk to you. All right. What I love about you guys is, you know, you are got your toes dipped in a lot of different businesses and make and bring in an astounding 3.4 billion dollars in revenues every year that's a pretty big league um so i think i could do it but i think it'd be more interesting if you maybe start by telling me the different parts of your company and how you put this all together to have something that really makes sense to you to manage and own and operate sure well Apple Leisure Group is a vertically integrated tourism group and specialized in leisure, uh, as our name says. Uh, so we do have three strong distribution channels, uh, Apple Vacations that you might have heard of before. Of course. It's one of them. Uh, Apple Vacations is the largest tour operator in the United States, which about 70% of the business is B2B. That means it's, uh, 70% goes to travel agents and then 30% goes directly to consumer. And we have about 1 million passengers with Apple Vacations, all of them to Mexico and the Caribbean. And then we have another company called Travel Impressions, uh, based in New York. And that one also has about uh, 500,000 passengers to Mexico and the Caribbean as well. And it's 100% B2B, so it, the whole product is distributed through travel agents. And then we have another uh, company called Chip Caribbean, which is an OTA, an online travel agent, which 100% of the passengers, which are another 500,000, are direct consumers going mainly online and uh, specialize in beaches, beach destinations, again, particularly Mexico and the Caribbean. So right. that's our distribution, which we are the largest distributor of vacation holidays and vacation packages in the United States to Mexico and the Caribbean. But then we have a large hotel company called AIM Resorts, where we have six different brands, yep. Secrets, Dreams, Sunscape, Solitary, Mm-hmm. Now, I'm breathless, and we have 65 resorts for about 23,000 rooms. So we're the largest resort company in the space in Mexico and the Caribbean. All on the beach, five of the brands are five-star, one brand is four-star. And then we have a sixth company called Amstar, which Amstar is a destination management company that makes the vacation experience uh, um, uh, better, safer, and more reliable and more comfortable, convenient to the guests, which we're in charge of transfers, mm-hmm. but we're also in charge of all types of, uh, of excursions, and we take care of the customers once they're in destination. So in that way, we integrate all these companies in a way that we can offer an integrated package to the consumers, and they have uh, a, a full vacation experience in a very convenient, all inside one package. So that's, that's, that's what we do, and then make us the largest in the United States on this, on this uh, type of business model. Uh, first of all, I'm impressed you could remember the names and what all your different companies do. 
because I think I would I would have trouble. I, I love that. what I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can hear that fashion in your, your your voice, Alex. And let me tell you, I think it's so cool because I think the typical vacationer, um, though they enjoy the travel process and figuring stuff out, uh, I, I think having to book and coordinate and make all of these different things kind of work separately and hopefully they come together in the end is a little bit more complicated than the average person is interested in. So it's interesting that you're bundling all of these experiences together to create um, a start to finish vacation package for people. How do you feel that people want to uh, vacation today, particularly in the Caribbean and Mexico and Dominican Republic and how that really relates to the services that you're offering? Yeah, sure. Well, uh, number one, I, I think uh, the Americans, and that's not only for the Americans, but the American mm-hmm. consumer especially is looking more more value for their money. And what they one of the uh, scare uh, resources they have is time. So they want more within a shorter period of time, and they want better within that uh, period of time. And I think that's exactly what we're what we're providing. That's why when we're talking about packaging, right. uh, particularly in the all inclusive space, and not just to our resorts, but to any other resorts that we sell, about eighty percent of our passengers end up with somebody else's resorts, but they're all like good quality and, and good business partners. Um, uh, it, in the all inclusive space, uh, you don't have to worry about any. Thing. I mean, it's like it's like one price, and, and pretty much everything it's included from the air for the tips, the taxes, the transfers, and even excursions if you want. And of course, everything in the hotel. And I think the the the, the consumer is moving towards more convenient, more value for money, but also uh, more luxury and more sophistication. They want to learn more once they're on vacation. They want to have a healthier experience. They want to have a much more intense experience than before. So, yeah, the drink, the relax and all that is still in place, but I think the consumer today wants something more. It's a lot more sophisticated and uh, particularly with the younger generation and, and, and not necessarily the millennials, but mm-hmm. the whole younger generation that is more active well, I, and, and has more appetite to learn more. I would, um, I would agree with you completely, and I would say um, in my age group, I'm a mid-40s guy, that um, I, I definitely love love lying around and doing nothing, but I also want to get out and explore the region. I'm like, why am I going all the way to Mexico if I'm not going to do something outdoors, energetic, and also maybe learn a little something at the, the same time? So you're seeing a lot of this with your customers, um, which I find is, um, which I find fast, absolutely um, fascinating. What are top, some of the types of things that you're finding the average customer feels they must do while on a vacation experience other than uh, sit around and drink all those all-you-can-drink cocktails? Yeah, absolutely, and that that that, that may, that's a win-win proposition. Number right. one, uh, it makes the, the vacation experience a lot more unique. It may it, it, that is the difference why you go to one place versus another one. It's a completely different feeling when you get in Jamaica than when you get in Cancun, yeah, that when you absolutely. get in Los Cabos, that when you get in Costa Rica. So, and that is very important. But it also increases the length of stay. When the customer finds more things to do on destination, they tend, they tend to stay longer. That obviously it's a win-win for the customer, obviously right. because they have more time on vacation, but also of course for us. And and I have to say something, in the all-inclusive space, uh, we encourage the guests to get out of the hotel and to really experience the place, not only because the vacation is going to be a better one and it's going to come back uh, happier, it's going to tend to come back again and again, but also because the hotels make more money every hour that the guest spends out of the hotel the guests save all that consumption and they make more right. money. So it's a win-win for everybody. And, and, and I think that's what the consumer is looking now. Right. I would say like the, uh, you know, not to show my age too much, even though I already told you, like that old, uh, old uh, commercial for uh, Connect Four, pretty sneaky, sis, by you, uh, you getting people out of there and you lower that con- consumption rate. I think that's a, that's a really interesting aspect to it. But again, your guests are really loving it because, you know, what we're seeing right now in terms of the travel trends is people really wanting to be a part of and understand Understand and learn other cultures on a uh, vacation experience. It's not, like I said, just about sitting around and, and doing um, nothing. And um, are, are you offering a lot of those tours yourself? Or are you partnering with uh, operators within the various locations to create that seamless um, process for your guests? We do, we do both. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, uh, we have our own company, as I mentioned before, Amstar, and we yes. do provide all these, these uh, excursion services on the different locations. And we make sure, number one, that they're safe, that they're reliable, mm-hmm. that they would be uh, uh, the, right, the right product for the right customer and all that. Um, but, but, uh, but, but we also partner with some of the people in certain destinations that, that we don't have our own presence or when they were trying to, uh, were we trying to have the best experience for the guests and then uh, we have an external provider that's able to do that we don't do that ourselves we we have some partners uh but for the most part we do we do 
package the uh, the experience, the uh, all of the experiences and destinations ourselves. Uh, but again, we promote whoever is best, whether mm-hmm. it's an in-house tour or an external partner, and uh, so that's what we're looking just the best and, and safe experience. I think safety yep. is absolutely uh, a must uh, when it comes right. to the American traveler uh, traveling out of the country. I, I can see why you're uh, you're CEO of the company because you are answering all of my questions before I get to ask those questions <laughs> on this interview, <laughs> which is which is tough because now I can't sound smart. And really, this whole show is just so I could feel good about myself, Alex. But listen, um, <laughs> I, I think I, I think that it's. It's interesting to me that um, that safety element of it. I mean, it, it seems obvious on one hand, but we're really talking about the, the psychology of, of the guests and making them feel comfortable. And my hunch is the more comfortable they feel, the more money that they're going to go out and spend, which in turn will make sure that they have a more enjoyable time, which will increase the likelihood for them to return to that specific property or one of the other hotels within your family of brands. Would that be the right assessment? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's correct. I think, I mean, number one, there's appetite for traveling outside of the country. There's 15 million new passports issued every year in the United States. Out of that, about half is renewals, and the other half, which are about 7.5 million, are new passports, people who never had a passport before. That means 75 to 80 million new passports every 10 years, and that's wow. huge. That, that means Americans that want to go out of the United States, and this is for leisure purposes. And the, 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 the largest region where we are enjoying the growth of these passports happens to be the region where we are, Mexico and the Caribbean. Of course, cruise ships are enjoying part of that growth, and uh, and, and and ourselves in the region where we're where we're operating. But the, but the number one uh, attribute that the consumer is looking is, is is safety, as I said before, and in many cases is perception. And uh, but that's why we need to be very careful how to to recommend and how to educate the customer a lot more. Right. The news sometimes uh, uh, take things out of context, and so we need to be very focalized and and to make sure that we're responsible, but at the same time, uh, uh, we're not misleading the customer and trying to scare the customers. So I think educating and, uh, and, and really, really uh, teaching what's, what's, uh, um, uh, what's really happening and where are the regions that we shouldn't go, that we shouldn't promote, and where are the regions that are perfectly safe, it's a very important uh, job that, that we have. And it's happening and it's working. Right. And you absolutely have to do that because I've seen in uh, Mexico, for example, there's been a lot of misinformation in the press about violence that you might see in certain areas of the country. Yeah. But it's kind of mm-hmm. a- akin to me Um, Why would I cancel a trip to uh, New York if something is happening in Los Angeles? So you you know what you know what I'm saying there, right? That's exactly right. Or why would you cancel? That's exactly right. Something happens in Detroit. You're going to cancel your trip to Miami. But 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 let me say something even more than that. If something happens in New York, why would you cancel your trip to New York? Because because there's parts and parts in New York. There's momentous and there's several things. I was I was inviting the people to guess, particularly the American audience, to go to go to Paris after the the terrorist attacks because mm-hmm. the American customer immediately scare. They yeah. stop going to 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 Europe, and and I think that's the best time to go to go to Paris. It was not only Agreed. cheaper, but it was safer. And uh, and the same thing happens with, after 9/11, right? We wanted mm-hmm. the whole world to come back to New York and enjoy the city uh, rather than shy away from it. So I think I think of course fear. It's it's a big threat for tourism and it's us the people that are in tourism uh, that have to 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 really explain and inform uh the customer in a in a responsible way uh, uh where to go when to go and how to go yeah i think um honestly uh one of the things that I believe is true is that more people die in um, bathtub related accidents every year than terrorism. So what are we going to do? Uh, not bathe. So saying that we shouldn't go to a place because there was some sort of violence just doesn't make any sense to me. And I encourage everyone uh, listening to this right now to understand the truth that just because something is really big and powerful in news headlines doesn't really mean it's true. I think we, we learned a lot about uh, what's true and not true during the last election cycle, for example. That's correct. Yeah. All right. So, you know, all inclusive, um, something that I've seen has really picked up in the last decade. You guys are right in the thick of it. Um, Yet people's demands are, I think, changing a lot, Alex, right? Because they're becoming more sophisticated. You've had up your game with food and beverage, with experiences. And now you're kind of figuring out that next iteration of what's going to happen with a program called um, Define the Lights, which I believe is all about customizing because that's where Mm -hmm. we're at right now, right? The future is all about customizing everybody's experiences um and yeah. you're really getting in on that so how does that work what are you thinking about when designing this program and what do you think the upside is for the guest 
Sure. Well, the first thing is that the all-inclusive was always uh, uh, perceived, and it had a connotation of cheap and uh, like mass market, yeah. uh, you know, one blanket, all one flavor, all one color, and by the way, not the best one and not the best quality. And I think and 20, it was mainly, 25 years ago, Alex, that was, that was true. So you know, I can absolutely, see I no, from. absolutely, mm-hmm. and it was totally, right. and it was totally uh, tailored for the for the for the uh, particularly the European customer. Mm-hmm. And if we mm-hmm. remember the time, right. you know, back in the day, when, and, and that's what it was. <laughs> I'm laughing here because uh, it used to be called the European plan and the American plan. Yeah. <laughs> funny, that's a huge contradiction. But yes. anyway, yes, <laughs> uh, no, but, but but that's that's the way it was designed. And, uh, and it was pretty much all cost-oriented, right? You would mm-hmm. pay one price, and now the, the responsibility of the hotel was to bring the, the cost as low as possible because right. you already pay for it. And therefore, the quality was not what you wanted, but not just a matter of quality, but also the delivery of the product was not Americanized yes. at all. And that's, those are the fundamentals of our, of our company. We started the company by designing this product for the American customer and for a more sophisticated customer. So we decided, one, to go higher end, go more luxury, B, to go more Americanized. Mm-hmm. And we don't even call ourselves uh, all-inclusive. We call ourselves unlimited luxury. And really, the type that's of product we give name. you is completely different. So we got rid of the wristbands. We got rid of all these right. towel cards. We got rid of the reservations for restaurants. We got rid of all these type of restrictions, buffets everywhere. Now we have all a la carte, a lot more sophisticated product. It really, we are like the perfect solution for the non-all-inclusive customers. Mm-hmm. And, I, I, and I truly believe that the customer who, who's going to an, an all-inclusive, what we call unlimited luxury vacation, it's a lot more a vacation because you have, it's not cheaper, but you have a lot more value for your money. And just the fact that you don't see any prices on the menu, it makes a lot more relaxing. The fact that you don't have to tip everybody, the fact that you don't have to t- bring your wallet with you or sign any check, right. it makes a tremendous difference when it comes to relaxing and going on holidays. So it's not a matter of being cheaper. It's right. not a matter of having any sacrifices when it comes to quality or, or variety or choices, uh, right. just the opposite, but at the same time, it's a lot more relaxing. And so we are doing that. The consumer is going more higher end. Consumers, for the first time experience this product, are loving it, and they're coming and coming back and recommending it. And we're going to go even more higher end, and at the same time, we're going more niche, because the customize that you mentioned before, it is very, very important. So now we have a very high end product that is more enver- environmentalist and wellness oriented. Mm-hmm. Then we have one adults only product that is more romantic and honeymoon oriented. Then we have another adult only product that is more party like, more sensual. Then we have another family product uh, that is more higher end and particularly uh, focused on activities, sports, and things like that. Right. So we need to focus and differentiate the different brands, not just among our own brands, but of course among the the competition among the choices and be a lot smarter and, and, and customize the product as much as we can to the consumer. And that starts by listening to the consumer, communicate with the consumer better. And that, of course, that involves uh, an unbelievable amount of, of, of resources in technology, but also the, the really strong determination to go and talk to the customer, listen to the customer, and then adapt, innovate, and be always uh, one step ahead of the game. Yes, absolutely. And I want to go back to what you were saying about the all-inclusive, about not worrying about the prices. And when I've enjoyed all-inclusive experiences, to me, you're right. It's a lot less stressful. Because if I happen to want a drink in the middle of the afternoon, and then, of course, I have to buy my uh, my wife a cocktail, too, I'm not going, oh, that's going to be another $30 every single time I get a round of drinks. And it, that takes me out of my head. It doesn't let me fully enjoy the experience. And honestly, I'm not all that big of a drinker to begin with, but um, I don't like to have to feel that pressure that every single time I want something, money is leaving my pocket. So you're right about it that. Go, it goes well. It, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but it, it goes well beyond that. I mean, yeah. there's, there's two, I, I just I spend holidays uh, uh, last year in Hawaii with my family, mm-hmm. and I have four daughters oh, times four smoothies a day yes. times $22 each. <laughs> Plus a tip, it was like two thousand dollars in smoothies. But but and it's not a matter of money. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It's exactly. a matter of really, really relaxing. Exactly. Don't even have to think about it. But the other thing is like you go down there, you meet a couple down there, you meet another family there. You decide to have dinner together. You don't have to worry about who's going to pick up the check. That's beautiful. Or have a drink with someone. That's a great angle. Yeah, I love it. And you're absolutely right. And the other thing I would argue is we're not really arguing over price. We're arguing over uh, value. I think today's customer, especially the premium customer, is willing to pay whatever they need to pay as long as they feel the experience that they're having is genuine, authentic, and of value, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, and I want to make a clear distinction in between customized and itemized. Yes. Because because the consumer, yes, is looking for for things that are appealing more personally mm -hmm. to to, mm -hmm. to to him or to her, uh, but that doesn't mean they don't love the convenience of having a prepackaged. And yes. one good example is a car. I remember the times when everything in the car was extra, or even when you bought a computer, you bought a laptop, even the software was extra. Mm -hmm. You want this and this and that, it, everything was extra. Now the whole world is going packaging. You buy a car now. Now, and it already includes a bunch of things. You buy a computer now, it already includes, it's ready to use. You go to the movie theaters, you, you, you buy the combo. It already includes the popcorn That's and right. the soda on the candy. Uh, you go to the restaurant, you choose the number one, number three, or number five. Even if you go to the high-end restaurant, now the more and more you see these tablet auto degustation menus, you don't even have to think about it. Right. So, and then you can focus on, on, on the reason why you're there, which is enjoy yourself, enjoy the company, enjoy the conversation. So what I'm saying is the whole world is going packaging because it's very convenient and it represents a lot more value for money. Yep. On the other hand, those packages has to be cost, uh, customized. And that's a big difference between customized and itemized. Yep, absolutely. All right, one word for you. Cuba, what are you thinking about? Yeah. Well, if you would ask me before the elections, my answer would be different. Right. Um, right. Cuba, Cuba, of course, we have high hopes in Cuba. Mm -hmm. I think it has a tremendous opportunity uh, uh, to grow, to become a better country. It, the, the, the Cuban people deserve way better. And, uh, and they're not there just to the rest of the world to see them how they're frozen in time. Mm -hmm. um, they're there really to, to participate in the global uh, experience, to grow, to, be, to, to, to have better opportunities, number one. But number two, from the, from the, from the, from the, from the product standpoint, um, uh, we're already selling Cuba. We're selling Cuba uh, the only legal way we can sell Cuba right now, which is on on our, on, on our packages with uh, travel impressions and Apple vacations, we're already sending passengers to Cuba. We, we're sending about 8,000 passengers this wow. year to Cuba on so, the one category that is called people to people. So, uh, yeah, I want to I, I wanna make sure I clearly understand that. So I today could book a package with your company and I could go yeah. to Cuba and I don't have to worry about all of the details that, quite frankly, I'm a little nervous about because it's an emerging market that I don't know anything about. Yeah, exactly. You can buy a package with us, but we the, the, the restriction is that you have to go under the 12 categories that are legal, whether it's a religious, whether it's scientific, whether it's sports trip. The one we use is called people to people. Mm -hmm. So that, may, that, that means you buy a package with us, but one day of your holiday, you need to interact directly with people and you need to be toured by someone that it's local that is going to take you to interact and interact could be go to a gallery or go to a local restaurant right. or, or, or or go to a museum and interact with the people so that's pretty smooth and actually i think it's a hey, good thing it's Once what everybody wants there. to do anyway these days on that, vacations yeah, like we just it, discussed Exactly, yeah. but it still has that restriction that you're not supposed to go for pure leisure as you can go to every other island. Right. So in that, right. in that aspect, clearly, clearly Cuba is in disadvantage. But then the other big opportunity we see, it's in the hotel side. We're not allowed now legally to go and have our own brands mm -hmm. and to have our own uh, hotel uh, uh, management company uh, operating in Cuba, and that's very unfortunate. So we were really hoping to the embargo to be, to be lifted, and I think uh, Obama's administration was, was, was leaning towards that direction, yes. and I was hoping that in 2017 yes. the embargo would be lifted in a way that we were able to bring our brands and management. Now, I don't know, and I, 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 really, I really say I don't know because people would guess, no, 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 things going to go back and the embargo is going to be even tougher than before and everything that Obama did on the helping Cuba is going to go back. But, and, but I'm, I'm not sure, because with Trump, I really don't know where, he, where his head is going to go, uh, because it's very, it's very unpredictable. So I really don't know what's going to happen. I still have high hopes that uh, the embargo is going to be lifted. It hasn't served any good purpose, and that we're going to be able to have hotels there. And once we have hotels there, then we can customize the product to the American customer, because that's the problem. Mm -hmm. The problem today is that Cuba is a beautiful island, wonderful people, highly educated people, has a great location, uh, uh, great weather, beautiful beaches, etc. But it's not Americanized at all, the product. And it's going to take some time before they, 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 they flip the, the infrastructure and the, uh, and the right. education and the training to fit the American customer, uh, particularly the high-end American customer right. that they want to have. That, may, that makes sense to me because uh, while it – if some travelers would love to have that unspoiled, definitively un-American experience there in order to break through the mainstream and really drive those numbers, especially with that high-end consumer you're talking about, people need to feel more comfortable, and that comes with the, uh, the Americanization of the experience as well, correct? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, today you to go, today you go to Quebec City, for example, in Canada, and, and it is a mass market. They have the, they have the big cruise ships. Of course, they have a lot of, of tourism from all over the world. The number one is from the United States, but it has an unbelievable sense of place. They, they, they still preserve all these, these wonderful attributes, that, that the history, uh, the charm, the food, the, the whole thing that, that any European city would have, and they're right here in Canada. So what I'm saying is Cuba does not need to lose the personality, the charm, the, the identity, the differentiation among the other islands in order to keep up with development, um, uh, growth, opportunities for the, for the, for the Cuban people and at the same time be a lot more Americanized in the sense that the American customers will have a, a, a safer and more convenient experience. Uh, but, but, but at the same time, it's not fair to say, just stay what it is so I can observe you because the people deserve better. Yeah, yeah, uh, a- absolutely. And, you know, I, I, in your quest to continue to serve people, of course, you want to go into some more of these emerging markets be- beyond Cuba. Um, you know, Colombia has mm-hmm. really taken off and Central and South America yep. in general seems to really be taking off. Um, Yep. Have your opinions changed about wanting to enter those markets in the last couple of weeks? Are you taking a wait and see attitude, or are you just um, no. moving full bore ahead? No, it was the opposite. No, mm-hmm. no, 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 no. We we want to go. We want to go further, and uh, we're going to those countries not just with American customers, but also for regional customers. The South Americans are traveling more within South America. Mexicans traveling more within Mexico and and the surrounding areas. And of course, because what has happened in the last uh, week that the, the 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 dollar is becoming stronger, and some other currencies, particularly the ones that have uh, high trade. Uh, agreements like Mexico, right. uh, their currencies have been devaluated because of the uncertainty, and that gives the American customer a lot more buying power. Mm-hmm. So um, we believe that the Americans will continue to travel in big numbers. We're really hoping that there's no any travel tax, new tax right. imposed, oh, oh, if, if they consider that that's, that's, that's going to be an import. Mm-hmm. And uh, But if there's no incremental taxes, I think the Americans will continue to find better and better value for their money going to, the, to those regions. And I think uh, they'll be in a better spot to spend more money uh, uh, in travel. And that's, that's what I'm hoping. So no, we are not shying away. We are we're right. going uh, again deeper. Uh, uh, so Colombia is one of our plans. I think Cartagena is one of the nicest cities mm-hmm. in the world and so unique and so, so special. Uh, but also other places, Central America, uh, Costa Rica is booming. We have a second hotel. We're looking to a third hotel now. Panama is doing very well. We even would love to go to Nicaragua, which is a beautiful country. Unfortunately, don't, don't, not, not many people know about how beautiful, clean, right. and safe Nicaragua is. Um, but then also, well, you know, we've been America, prejudiced we against thinking, Nicaragua because, um, and Colombia too, for that matter, because of the uh, the drug trade, which used to own those countries. But yeah. most Americans don't realize that that's really a thing of the past. Absolutely, and that's why education is key. And people keep thinking that Nicaragua is part of the axis of of, of, of evil, <laughs> and uh, and 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 they still thinking about you know the the contrast and during the Reagan times and now it's a completely different uh, high democracy clean country uh, uh, and a great environment and and but that's that that's just one example and I think the same thing for Colombia I mean Colombia is very safe right now yes. um, so so I think that uh, it's a matter of education that's what we have to do our job and I think that's one of the opportunities where the travel agent could add a lot of value mm-hmm. the tra- travel agents can really add value. Uh, by really training and, and uh, educating uh, the consumer. Uh, yes, we, we wouldn't be selling any product that would put the customers in, 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 no, uh, in danger, particularly the American customer in danger, because we know what's a favorite sport for the American customer, which is suing. Mm-hmm. And we don't want to get sued. <laughs> uh, and uh, therefore, we would never take the risk. Uh, nor would anyone mm-hmm. in, on this podcast imply that you're doing that. I do think that the role of the travel agent has become more critical than ever to um, being the gateway to expose potential customers to these markets so that they get that education process and they say, hey, I bet you didn't realize about these amazing options that you didn't even know were on the table for you, right? Absolutely. And by the way, when they do that and when they convince the consumer, when they train the consumer or they satisfy the, the, the curiosity of the consumers and they actually, the consumer ends up going, they come back extremely happy. So they look good. The travel agent looks good. They make money. They have the customer loyalty. And the fact is that these consumers are discovering for the first time these wonderful mm-hmm. experiences that they never had before for other reasons than money right. or time. It was just, uh, yeah. it, it was just uh, the fact that they were not educated properly. And I would say 40% of the passengers 
that fly in our charters, because we also have charters, but about 70% of our business is commercial flights, but we have our own charters as well. But 40% of the people who travel in our charters, they were never outside of the country. They're going out of the country for the first time in their lives. And about 95% of yeah, ninety-five percent of them come back extremely happy, yeah. and when they come back extremely happy, they tend to a do it again, b tell their friends. So I think that uh, that that's like snowball, right. where people are discovering this for the first time, they're highly satisfied, and they want to do it again. So it's a whole new market. The number of Americans traveling outside of the country for the first time is huge, and it's growing. Yep, and I think it will continue to grow. And no matter what happens with the future administration, I do not think you could legislate people's desires to travel and have new experiences. And I really think we're in a bold new era when it comes to wanting to get out there and connect with people. And I've always said I think travel is um, the best way to bring different cultures together and for all of us to realize hey, you know what? We're all pretty much the, the same. We may not uh, look alike or have the same foods, but. Essentially, we're all just exactly alike, right, Alex? Absolutely. Travel, travel, uh, um, uh, it's, it educates people. Travel lowers the, the, the fear and therefore the hate. When you go to a country and you're treated very well and you understand a little bit of the culture and you have empathy for those people, mm-hmm. that people have empathy f- for you and you connect, you cannot hate them anymore. No. You cannot, you're, not, you're not afraid of them. At the end of the day, hatred is, is, is it's, it's a consequence of fear. So, so once you see them, once you're there for the, with your own eyes, you eliminate the prejudice immediately. You yep. connect. Then you don't, you, don't, you don't ignore the fact anymore, and then you don't hate them anymore. And that makes a, the world a better world. So traveling, every one of us become an ambassador. Every one of us become a link of good when it comes to people traveling and connected to yeah. other countries. How would I hate or have any type of prejudice against Tanzania or, or, or their people when they treat me like king when I go there? And I love the country. I love to connect the people. So any cause that's going to help Tanzania right now, I would support it. The same thing for Haiti or the same thing for any yeah. other place that I go. So traveling it's not just a, a, a leisure activity that it's, that it's enjoyable. It's a very relevant factor to have a better world. Yes, that's right. And, you know, one, I went to China a couple of years ago, and I came back understanding that this is not the big, bad, red monster. They're just individual people that want to feed their families and enjoy their lives, just like the, the rest of us. It's so silly. I'm working, I'm working very hard. I was in China last week, that's and they're working right. very, very hard. They're growing very fast. And, by the way, the communist China, mm. China is the most capitalist country I ever saw in my life. <laughs> they, they, they don't have democracy, but they're extremely capitalist. Yep. Yep. I, I, I agree with you 100%. All right. We're running out of time because I know as a CEO, you've got a lot of important things to take care of. But I do want to know, um, you know, the hotel industry is really at its peak right now in general. And uh, it's difficult to to just draw vast conclusions. But where are your opportunities and challenges that you see happening for you um, in the coming year? Or is it just mostly administration based and you don't know? No, I mean, I, I mean, the hotels, I think they're doing in general, very good, not just resorts on the beaches, but also city hotels. I think the economy is way better than, 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 than some people would think in the United States. And uh, I think the activity keeps moving and, and the, the employment uh, rate is going down. And, and, and as a result of that, you see more activity in the cities. And I think if you see the rates in uh, average rates, particularly on the, on the luxury segment, but not, not only the luxury segment, in cities like Washington, like New York City, right. like San Francisco, I mean, you see now we're way, way, way ahead of the game. And by the way, there's always a very strong correlation in between the average rate of these hotels and the price of real estate. And the price of real estate is always a good indicator of where the consumer is. Right. But so, so, so city hotels are doing good. Resorts are doing very good as well, mm-hmm. particularly in certain places in the region, because there's more activity. There's more people traveling from all over the world to all over the world. But particularly with Americans, uh, uh, I think this is something that, it's, that is really uh, exponentially growing, particularly in the last five years. Uh, so I, the, the challenge I see going going forward is, is, is a fear. I, I, I really hope that now that the elections are over, we're not going to be manipulating the people with fear yeah. and, uh, and, and, and really deliver optimism rather than, than pessimism. When you deliver fear, yes. of course, there's other industries that are going to mm-hmm. boom like, 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 uh, like weapons mm-hmm. or like uh, insurance or like um, uh, any type of, of protections. 
And uh, I think that that uh, and I really hope that the, that the that the mind of the consumer will go in the other direction and start thinking a little bit more optimistic, start thinking that the world's a better place than that some people would like to make us think and that the United States is a much better and safer place that some people would like us to think. And uh, thinking positively always, always had the mood and the, the disposition of the people to, to, to travel. So I really hope, and, and my concern is that, that uh, I hope that for political purposes, um, the, the world, and it's not just the United States, but, but particularly the United States, is not be trying to drive uh, policy or messages through, through fear and through, through closing borders and to build walls and to protect ourselves and to, to, to you know, just be one America and forget about the rest of the world. I think now we're at the, rich, the point of no return. We're part of a much larger community, and we have a, we have a global responsibility. Um, I know we're not have to babysit and be the policemen of, of the world, but we do have as a leaders of the world a responsibility, and that responsibility involves inform well, don't scare people, and, uh, and, and, and as I said before, fear is a, it's a huge enemy of tourism. So I, I, so I hope uh, uh, they don't do that, and I hope the, uh, the, that they manage the whole thing with optimism and, and, and objectivity and, and good, with good news, because there are a lot of good news, we just forget about them. Yeah, Alex, that's a thing of beauty, what you just said right there. I think you're absolutely 100% right. We are beyond the point of no return, and um, it, is our, it is our job to get out there and dispel the, uh, the fear and the, and the hate-mongering and all that negative energy that we've seen poured out there, because it's all just smoke and mirrors. Our country is safe. Yeah. The world has never, ever, ever, never been safer than it is today. But this crazy yeah. news cycle that we have today is really perverting what the actual truth is. And I encourage everyone out there that's listening to forget about what you're reading on the news. Go out there and travel. Book a trip with Apple Leisure Group. Why not? They're going to take really good care of you and make sure you're safe. Alex, any final words before we leave? How can we um, find some of your companies? Time for a great shameless plug, too. No, no, I just want to say that I really enjoy the conversation and I, I, I love what I do, uh, uh, and not just from the business standpoint, but, but it really has a, has a, has a stronger mission, uh, which is to make a, a world a better place. And I think it's all of us. Anybody who travels from one place to the other is already making the world a better place as long as they travel with, a, with their hearts and, and, and eyes and ears open. So, so I hope we can all continue to promote people uh, to travel and experience, have different and new experiences from all over the world, uh, including including inside the United States, but not only in the United States. And uh, uh, so we make a world a better place. Beautiful. I love it. And that's a great note to uh, end on. And I want to thank everybody for listening today. Um, for me and Alex Zaya, CEO of Apple Leisure Corp, Apple Leisure Group, I want to thank you for listening today. And heck, I'll be back next week. That is, unless I decide to uh, take a tour with Alex and go to Cuba. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening to No Vacancy, the hospitality industry's number one podcast with your host, Glenn Hausman, online at Rouse.media, on Twitter at Traveling Glenn, and on Facebook.com slash Glenn.Hausman. We'll catch you next time.